What is happening, Magnus Sykes? So, uh, I saw a couple of seconds of this and I said, you know what? Oh, 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 oh. I need to speak on this too. Are you ready? Come on, man. Come on! All right, so one thing I see a lot online is the talk of money. People always talk about, well, you know, it, it pays to hate something. It pays to grift. I really got to say, having been doing YouTube for eight years, I know what makes money and what doesn't. And how I started my channel was, I didn't give a shit about what makes money. I just care about what... He's been doing YouTube eight years, 12 years. Um, I got way more video views when I would talk about things that I loved. Look at the biggest videos that I have. A lot of them are try not to laughs. Many of them have disappeared over the years because of YouTube's changing rules. I was over a billion views, had to delete them. Uh, and the biggest stuff, period, point blank, was all unboxings. Unboxings for what? Marvel stuff. At its peak. Infinity War and Endgame. At its peak. Okay? So, no. It doesn't pay to grift. What I'm interested in making. Sometimes those videos would flop. Sometimes mm -hmm. those videos would do great. That's just the name of the game. I don't... Yep. As you guys know, I make videos that I want to make. But I also make videos that you want me to make. As a matter of fact, if you want your channel to be successful, you do have to make the videos that your audience wants you to make. So every once in a while, you'll see me do videos where I might only get 10,000 views. Maybe nine, eight, seven. I know that you guys don't find that the best video for me to do. Okay? But I wanted to do it because I was interested in it. And sometimes there's a small portion of you that I know want me to do something, do a video on, and I'll do it for you guys. However, yes, I know what gets me the most views. That's why the channel is still thriving. However, I got way more views when I would speak on something that was blowing up in popularity that people loved. A Marvel movie a DC movie, certain trailers, something try not to laughs. You know what I mean? Everything that made us happy, everything that made us want to talk, yeah, made more money and got more views. Well, I'll say this, got more views. Because in the past, when I blew up and when I got started getting the most views ever that I've ever gotten on my channel for certain videos, they didn't pay as well, but they pay better now. So, God, I'd have been wiping my booty with dollar bills back then if we were getting paid the way we get paid now, okay? So, it don't pay. That's just a cope. That's a cope that people use. It's like when their favorite YouTubers don't like what they like. Oh, they're grifting. You know, it pays the graft. <laughs> it pays to hate. <laughs> really control what is popular, what isn't. But I have to say, to the people that say that it pays more to hate on something, I can tell you firsthand from experience that is not true. It pays much more to love something, That's to push right. something. That's right. To shill for something, let's say. <laughs> My best month was when The Mandalorian Season 2... I guess. I I guess it pays to shill because behind the scenes, they're probably getting a check from a company to lie about. You know what I mean? Um, but, you know, what's interesting is my fan base isn't... Um, they're not woked up. So they... They see through B BS. So if I were to like say all say when Captain Marvel came out, which is when it was the beginning of the end for Marvel, 
Say I just lied and faked like I loved everything woke that came out from there on. I do not think that I would be doing as well. You know why? Because people would be calling me a shill all day. It'd probably be the same. It'd probably be the same. It's like you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. You got what I'm saying? The, the main factor is a failing product. See, when Marvel was skyrocketing, had its meteoric rise, we were getting tons of views. Everyone loved it. Everyone wanted to, everybody wanted to talk about it, to see it, to discuss it. The rumors, the leaks, things that were guaranteed, official announcements for castings and movies. Everyone wanted to talk about it. It was the talk of the town. It was so great to be a YouTuber in my genre then. But now it half sucks. You have to turn lemons into lemonade. Like we see stuff, it's like, oh God, this actor said this. All right, this director said this. Oh, they're blaming us for this. Oh, here's a new trailer. Her is going to be woked up. Let's check it out. Let's hope that it's not. Da, 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 da. It's like the same. It's like, it, it's, it's, it's part of its drudgery. You almost don't want to do it, but you got a business to run. People want your reaction. People want your review. You are in your trenches for other people. You give your review so they watch it or don't want to watch it or don't have to watch it. They come to us to find out what happened in the Acolyte rather than going to watch the Acolyte because it's so bad. When people are saying that your reviews are better than the Acolyte or better than these shows or better than these movies... Now we've gotten to a very low point with Hollywood. Um, came out. It did over 60 million views mm. on YouTube in one month. And then again, 60 million views in January. Damn. Because um, it was December and then January. It's about 100 yeah, the most, the most views I've ever gotten on a video is 14 million. And that's my unboxing of the Infinity Gauntlet. 120 million views in 60 days, which is... Pretty substantial. It's yeah. pretty good. I think I only had like 2 million subs at the time or something like that. And let me tell you. Pay was it good. It is <laughs> much more lucrative when something is good, when a project is really That's exciting right. for a lot of people. And when you are talking about it with emotion and passion and pizzazz That's right. and love. Then what do you think blew my channel up? You hear why he said that? We were talking about it with passion, emotion. Pizzazz, why did my channel blow up? Because the most popular movie franchise in history, Star Wars, came back. I'm a Star Wars fan. I gave my honest reaction to the Force Awakens trailer. That trailer reaction is no longer up anymore because of copyright claims from companies. However... I do have another one up that I re-uploaded, but that is what blew me up. And I was on the news internationally. It was just, I was growing by thousands every day, 3,000 plus every single day. And you know, my videos started getting more and more views. And two years later, I quit my job because I was making enough money from YouTube and people I would see videos all over the place, you know, they would talk about, and this was around the time when reactions were exploding and they were controversial and people were loving us. People weren't like liking us and, you know, and, you know, I was one of the top guys, you know, and people was just like, oh, you know, talking about how much they love my videos and, you know, how charismatic I am, how much they love the energy and how I dress up for my reactions and just, just, I'm just a big kid. And it was so fun to just bring all of that out to you guys. And now um, I get to be honest too. But I get to be honest in what I don't like about the product. And people will say, oh, it changed. I didn't change. What I watched changed. See, you were seeing a reaction to something I liked. So now you're seeing reactions to stuff that I don't like. I didn't change. The media changed. That's what changed. You're getting truthful me. I have stayed the same. Nothing about my reactions are different. 
other than the reactions to the media that has changed. From there, I'm inspired to make theory videos and lore videos and character background videos. What if this happens? What if that happens? Because I'm intrigued. Because I'm happy. Because I want to get into it. And to be honest... You know what that's like? What if I was doing street interviews? And I used to do comedic street interviews. And, you know, I would talk to people. And I would crack jokes and have fun with them. We'd be laughing and stuff. But then, as I continued to do street interviews, a.k.a. reactions, every time I did a street interview, someone punched me in the face. Or they slapped me. And I got in a fight in every single one. And it, to tell you the truth, being YouTube, that would send me into the stratosphere for popularity. But stick with me. You change, you fight in all these videos now? Well, yeah. The people that I'm interviewing have changed. They've started punching me in the face. What do you expect me to do? Just sit there and take it? And that's what these companies are doing. They expect you to just sit there and take this garbage that they're feeding you. And we have said no more. That's where the money is. It's when you're making content that you are really passionate yes. about. So this talk of like, oh. That's where the joy is. That's where the fun is. I think it's very rare that you're going to find a YouTuber that truly, truly enjoys grifting and hate. Because something like that destroys your soul. You know what I mean? It's just, oh man, you know you're selling your soul for a buck. You know you're selling your soul for hate, to manufacture hate and fake rage videos. Oh, no. Okay, if you ever see me angry, if you ever see me rageful, as a matter of fact, with the whole turning lemons into lemonade, if you notice, I do interject comedy into almost every single video that I do because I try not to take it too seriously because I do not want it to eat at my spirit. I want to stay, you know what I mean? I jump on you, I, I entertain you guys and I get off and I live my life, okay? I'm not going to let Disney or any other company that's destroying the, the shows and the movies and the video games and the books and comic books and everything else that I love, I'm not going to let them destroy my happiness. Even though part of my happiness does come from entertainment, not all of it does, okay? And my true happiness will never, ever lean on entertainment. You know, it pays to grift, it pays to hate. It's simply not true. It's a cope. When you're on YouTube and you have a following, it pays to... Peel a boiled egg. From now on, whenever you see someone typing that we're grifters or that it pays to hate or whatever, just say you're coping. You're coping because they don't like what you like. Copium. They are mad. You know how many times I've seen comments, Roman subscribing. I used to love you. Now you just hate everything. <laughs> and they're lying because I don't hate everything. But the problem is I don't like what they love. They like the garbage and I don't. And they identify with me. And now that someone that they identify with is hurting their feelings by saying that they do not like what they like, it becomes almost like crimes of passion. People are violently enraged at you. You'll find the most violent crimes are from people that know each other. You find the ones we they, they talk about, oh, they stabbed them 1,038 times. And then ate their butthole. Yeah, they knew each other. They're so angry because they had such an emotional connection to this person. And then they somehow betrayed them by not, <laughs> you know, the crimes of passion you hear about them cheating and all this other. But with us, it, the, the biggest thing is not liking what they like. Okay? Listen. Listen. To the people that spread the hate like that and you get all crazy angry at us like that, the world does not revolve around you, okay? You have an opinion, we have an opinion. We should be able to state it without fighting like that, without threatening each other, without threatening each other's lives and livelihoods and trying to destroy each other's reputations online. We don't do that. 
But the other side does. Isn't that weird? They claim that they're the good guys. But they're the ones that are trying to destroy our reputations. They threaten our lives. They threaten our families. They threaten people that we know. They threaten our livelihoods. They threaten our money. They threaten our business relationships. They try to to get sponsors taken from us. They try to do all this stuff. But they're the good guys. Meanwhile, we're saying we don't like this. I hate this outfit. Or this is stupid. That's it. We're not calling for the majority of us. We're not calling for everyone to be fired, for everyone to die, for everyone to be hurt, for their children to be hurt. For their, We're not calling them, calling them istophobes of all kinds. We're not doing any of that stuff. The majority of the people that have a problem with it are not doing that. However, what are the majority of the people doing that don't like that we have a different opinion than them? Yeah, I've been clearly even stabbed in the back by a person that was my friend publicly. It See, it, it's the insanity of that mind virus that Elon Musk talks about. It destroys people. Big. You can do whatever you want and uh, you'll make money. But the, the cash cow is when something is really good. When people are happy, when you're happy, and you can see that through the content that you make, the passion. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think I think that's how content should be made, you know? But at the end of the day, I think what makes a really good content creator is someone who's authentic and real and doesn't just blindly love something or blindly hate something no matter what. Mm-hmm. And I think here with my channel, you get that. You get, you know, if it's shit, I'm going to call it out. I'm a George Lucas purist at the end of the day. Yeah, well, just blind you, Master Yoda. <laughs> and I hold that as the highest standard. And if something strays away from that, I'll be like, this is stupid. If something goes along that and expands on it, I fight alongside and I die. Yeah, you remember when he uh, first did his review of, uh, was it uh, uh, the, the Rise of Skywalker or something? Um, you forget the names of these terrible movies. Um, he liked it. And I did a video and I was like, yo, somebody that I never expected to like it, like it, like it, like, like it, liked it. Did I hate on him? Did I say he was stupid? Did I call him a moron? Did I say he wasn't a real fan? No, I knew that he was entitled to his opinion. I was shocked. I was surprised. I think over time he changed his opinion. I've heard that, that people were like, yeah, over time he changed his opinion. That happened to me when I first saw Street Fighter. Remember the Street Fighter movie with Van Damme? I loved it as a kid. And then after viewing it a few more times, I was like, this is hot, steaming garbage. And I never watched that movie. It's got a couple of funny lines and stuff, but that movie is trash. Die on that hill. So it really depends on the product really depends on the material and uh, I can say firsthand that it pays much 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 more than most I've ever made when something is good and when you love it yes so enough of that talk you know leave the leave the money talk to the to the youtubers who have actually had experience with views and what does make money what does and make yes money. and uh, if that was on the pandemic um, I think youtubers got paid the most during the pandemic because everyone was in the house watching TV I remember one check that I got, I was shocked. I was like, I cannot believe I made this much money. And at the time it didn't occur to me. But then after I thought about it, I was like, this is all because we're all inside. We're all, actually I thought it was one, it could be in a combination. I think companies were spending more to advertise to get us out and shopping because a lot of us were in the house. So it may have been twofold. I'm not sure. I would have to ask someone within YouTube. But I think that, yeah. Yeah, I think that's, it may have been a combo of the two. Money and seeing the trends uh, and leave the rest to just, you know, your own opinions. But it's not factual. So, hope you guys have a great day. A little bit of uh, analytical insight on the YouTube side of things. And I hope everything's going to be good. I hope Star Wars will be good. I don't, I don't pray for the death of it.
No, um, neither do I. I just wanted I want to, to get be better. Want to be a fan. Yeah. Want to be happy. Want to be a fan be, again. Feel like a kid again. To this, yeah. So, anyways, but I will defend. You know, I will defend Star Wars always, forever, and what I believe Star Wars is, which is the first six films. And if something strays away from that, best believe I'm gonna talk about it. I'm gonna be real about it. And if I get catch flack for that Too from bad. whoever, people yeah. who blindly love it, shills, people who actually love it for real, mm -hmm. so be it. Jedi. <laughs> <laughs> He does lie, though. In the middle of stuff, he does impressions. <laughs> like when I'm like, well, a lot of you were thinking, did I like it? <laughs> no. <laughs> I just, wherever I can fit them in, I do. Get over to Star Wars Theory, subscribe, tell them Tyro Magnus sent you, and remember, children, it does not pay to grift. 10 million subscribers. Woo!